Good morning, and thank you for joining us in this session, Breakdown Data Silos, why Amazon S3 is the best place to build your data lake. My name is Matt Sidley, and I'm a product manager at AWS on Amazon S3. Let's talk about the new realities that customers are facing. Organizations of all sizes and all industries are seeing huge growth in their data and want to turn data into a valuable business asset. Organizations are also seeing all areas of their business benefit from the influx of data, from finance to marketing to HR. Finally, organizations want to do new types of analytics, like machine learning over new sources of data, like log files, data from clickstreams, social media, and internet-connected devices. These organizations want to identify and act upon the opportunities for faster business growth by attracting and retaining customers, boosting productivity, proactively maintaining devices, and making informed decisions. So what's happened over the last number of years? As customers have accumulated so much data, a lot of that data lives in different data silos. And it's really hard to do analytics when you have to go to all these different data silos. Customers are looking for a highly scalable, available, secure, and flexible data store, or a data lake, that can handle extremely large data sets. With a data lake, customers can store all their structured and unstructured data using the open data format of their choice, like ORC and Parquet, and tag their data in a central searchable catalog. Customers can run any type of analytics from historical reporting to machine learning based predictive analytics efficiently without having to transform or move large amounts of data. AWS helps organizations quickly get from data to answers by providing mature and integrated analytics services, ranging from cloud data warehouses to serverless data lakes. Getting answers quickly means spending less time building, plumbing, and configuring cloud analytics services to work together. AWS helps you do exactly that by giving you an easy path to build a data lake and start running diverse analytics workloads, secure cloud storage, compute, and network infrastructure that meets the specific needs of the analytics workloads, a fully integrated analytics stacks with a mature set of analytics tools covering all common use cases and leveraging open source and standard languages, engines, and platforms, and the best performance, the most scalability, and the lowest costs for analytics. One of the biggest architectural transformations we're seeing is how storage is used, and that's the rise of the modern data lake. And for data lakes, Amazon S3 is the most common, and we believe the best place to run a data lake. S3 allows you to migrate, store, manage, and secure all structured and unstructured data at unlimited scale, breaking down data silos. With a wide range of features, Amazon S3 is the ideal service to build or replatform and manage a data lake of any size and purpose. It is the only cloud storage service that lets you manage data at the object, bucket, and account levels, make changes across tens to billions of objects with a few clicks, and configure granular data access policies, saves costs by storing all objects across numerous storage class, and audit all activities across your S3 resources. S3 has unmatched durability, availability, and scalability. S3 delivers 11 nines of durability and was designed from day one to protect data by storing across at least three independent data centers. That's what we call a region. Other cloud providers have tried to confuse matters by calling a single data center a region. The reality is that the availability and the durability of our standard regional storage is often better than what others call multi-region storage. S3 is proven at scale we host more data lakes than anyone else, with tens of thousands and growing every day, covering exabytes of data with retrieval capacity measured in terabits per second. S3 is the most cost-effective cloud object storage service at a dollar per terabyte per month. Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive is the lowest cloud storage which stores data across at least three geographically separate data centers, unlike other low-cost cloud storage options. We don't just build the lowest cost storage, we innovate in different ways for cost savings too. The S3 Intelligent Tiering Storage class monitors your objects and automatically moves data between different storage access tiers based on how you access your data, lowering your storage costs. That's the type of innovation that over 14 years of experience in storing vast amount of storage brings you. 
S3 has the most options for migrating data with 17 different ways to get your data in and out of the cloud, depending on the nature of you, your data and your application. Finally, S3 has the broadest ecosystem of integrations, both native AWS services and a marketplace of analytics and data lakes tools and software through AWS Marketplace. For the last several years, the architectural transformation towards large scale data lakes has been clear. Customers want a single data repository that can be used by a variety of users and teams to meet their business objectives without needing to constantly duplicate data across data stores or run ETL jobs. They want data to accelerate their business, not constantly be fighting to make it available. So let's talk about best practices for when you're building your data lake. Before you start your setup, you wanna think about where you store your data. First, you wanna store all your structured and unstructured data in a single place and ensure that you can immediately start ingesting data in from different systems. And at the same time, when you discover new use cases or your business expands to newer domains, you can plug in more applications that can start analyzing that data without a need to rethink your architecture. Finally, you want to build a data lake that scales and that stands the test of time because you won't know today all the use cases you'll want to use your data lake for. It is important to know exactly what data sets are important and how they should be cleaned, enriched, and transformed to solve different business problems. All of this and more is exactly why you should be choosing S3 as the foundation of your data lake storage. Here's what your workflow might look like. The first step is what I just spoke of, choosing the right storage. I'll talk more about this in the next few slides. Next, you want to ingest your data. Amazon S3 has integrations with both native AWS services and third-party tools and partners that can help with ingestion. Rather than looking at your data lake as a data store that can be used for analysis at some point in the future, structuring your data scheme is first meets your quality thresholds and makes it easier to analyze that data. The fourth step is to configure it correctly, apply the right access controls, security policies, and compliance provisions. Finally, now you're ready to start running analytics to gain those business insights. So let's start with setting up storage. Amazon S3 has a number of storage classes to choose from. Whether you have demanding performance needs, data residency requirements, unknown access patterns, infrequently accessed data, or archival needs, S3 has for your data access, durability, and cost needs. You can store frequently accessed data in S3 standard and less frequently accessed data at lower rates and archive objects at the lowest cost for maximum savings. All of the S3 storage classes are designed for industry-leading security, scalability, availability, and durability. First, let's review the S3 storage classes, as this will help us understand where to use what storage class in our data lake. Performance object storage for frequently accessed data. S3 standard is designed for 11 nines of durability as objects are stored redundantly across multiple availability zones. Because it delivers low latency and high throughput, S3 standard is ideal for a wide variety of use cases, including data lakes. Amazon S3 standard infrequent access is for data that is accessed less frequently, but requires immediate access when needed. S3 standard infrequent access has similar latency and throughput and durability as S3 standard, but with a lower price fee. Typically, we find that data lake customers have data that cools over time making S3 standard infrequent access a great fit for this data. To move data from S3 standard to standard infrequent access, you can use S3 lifecycle management to automate that data movement. You can also use S3 lifecycle management to transition data into any of our storage classes. Next, we have S3 outposts, which can be used for data lakes with local data residency requirements and is satisfied demanding performance needs by keeping data close to on-premises applications only available on AWS Outposts and delivers object storage to your on-premises environment with the same S3 APIs and is designed to durably and redundantly store data across multiple devices and servers on your outpost. 
We also offer low-cost archiving options for data that is rarely accessed. Amazon S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive are designed to be the lowest cost Amazon S3 storage classes, allowing you to archive large amounts of data at a very low cost. Data lakes often contain valuable assets. Customers store these assets long-term in the Glacier storage classes, making the data available for future needs, such as machine learning, model training, or for compliance and audit requirements. Data that might need to be retrieved in the near term can be stored in S3 Glacier and data that needs to be retained for years should be stored in S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Data can be retrieved in as little as a few minutes from S3 Glacier. S3 Glacier Deep Archive is the lowest cost cloud storage and is ideal for long-term data archival and digital preservation for data that may be accessed once or twice in a year. When needed, data can be retrieved within 12 hours. Finally, we have S3 Intelligent Tiering. S3 Intelligent Tiering is the only cloud storage that automatically delivers cost savings by moving objects between four access tiers based on changing access patterns. S3 Intelligent Tiering is designed for 11 nines of durability by storing objects across multiple availability. S3 Intelligent Tiering is one of our most popular storage classes for data lakes. So let's dive a bit deeper into the four S3 Intelligent Tiering access tiers. For data sets with high performance requirements, S3 Intelligent Tiering delivers millisecond latency and high throughput performance with a frequent access tier priced the same as S3 Standard and an infrequent access tier priced the same as Standard Infrequent Access. You might have noticed that on the previous slide, I mentioned S3 Intelligent Tiering now has four access tiers. That's because you can now also activate automatic data archiving to two new access tiers to get the lowest storage costs in the cloud. For data sets with changing access patterns where subsets of objects may become rarely accessed, you can now have the option to save even more on storage costs by activating a new archive access tier, priced the same as S3 Glacier, and a new deep archive access tier, priced the same as Glacier Deep Archive. So how does S3 Intelligent Tiering work for your data lake? For small monthly object monitoring and automation fee, S3 Intelligent Tiering monitors access patterns and automatically moves objects that have not been accessed for 30 consecutive days from the frequent access tier to the infrequent access tier. Objects stored in the frequent and infrequent access tiers have the same performance as S3 Standard, which means objects are always available for immediate access when needed. Once you activate one or both of the archive access tiers, which are designed for asynchronous access, S3 Intelligent Tiering will automatically move objects that haven't been accessed for 90 days to the archive access tier, and after 180 days, to the deep archive access tier, all within the S3 Intelligent Tiering storage class. Anytime an object in the archive access tier or deep archive access tier is accessed, the object is moved to the frequent access tier in as little as a few hours. In summary, S3 Intelligent Tiering can further optimize storage costs when access patterns change without any analysis, operational overhead, or retrieval fees. Now that we've covered the different storage class options for data lakes, let's talk about how to optimize for all stages of your data lake. To achieve the highest performance and lowest costs, it's important to select the right storage class for each stage. First, for ingesting short-lived raw data, such as small log files, S3 Standard is the right storage class as there's no minimum duration for data stored. S3 Standard is also the right choice for data generated by ETL jobs due to the frequency of data churn. For the production data lake itself, S3 Intelligent Tiering is the best fit for the majority of customers. S3 Intelligent Tiering will manage costs by storing data in the appropriate storage class based on access patterns, which in the data lake is often unpredictable due to the many users accessing the data. Finally, S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive are the right storage classes for retaining historical data to optimize for cost. You can also continue to use S3 Intelligent Tiering here with the introduction of automatic archiving. The key takeaway here is it's important to optimize for costs for all stages of your data lake. AWS offers the most comprehensive range of options to help you take the next step and move data to Amazon S3 without major disruptions and at a low cost. You can move petabytes to exabytes of data from your data centers to S3 
using physical appliances with AWS Snow Cone, AWS Snowball Edge, and an AWS Snowmobile, or connect your on-premises applications directly to AWS with AWS Storage Gateway. You can also use AWS DataSync to transfer hundreds of terabytes and millions of files to Amazon S3 at speeds up to 10 times faster than open source tools for timely analysis and processing. You can accelerate data transfer using a dedicated network connection between a customer's network and AWS with AWS Direct Connect, or boost long distance global data transfers using Amazon's globally distributed edge locations with Amazon S3 Transfer Acceleration. For real-time data movement, AWS provides multiple ways to ingest real-time data generated from new sources such as websites, mobile apps, and internet-connected devices. To make it simple to capture and load streaming data or IoT device data, you can use Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose, Amazon Kinesis Video Streams, and AWS IoT Core. The key takeaway is that AWS has a wide range of tools to help you move data. And it's important to choose the ingest service that matches your type of data. You should expect that your data will rapidly grow in your data lake. It's important to plan now to automate the management of your data lake. Here are a few best practices to build a data lake that scales. First, use S3 object tags. S3 object tags are key value pairs that can be attached to objects. They can be used to provide granular control access, analyze usage, manage lifecycle policies, and replicate objects. Second, use S3 lifecycle management to manage your objects so they are stored cost-effectively throughout their lifecycle. Lifecycle management can be used to transition between storage classes, such as from S3 standard to S3 standard from frequent access, as your objects age, or can be used to expire objects. You can also use S3 Intelligent Tiering Storage class to automate data movement between the four access tiers to optimize for cost and performance. Third, utilize S3 batch operations to automate large-scale operations on Amazon S3 objects. You can use S3 batch operations to copy objects, set object tags, or access control lists, initiate objects restores from Amazon S3 Glacier, or invoke an AWS Lambda function to perform custom actions using your objects. The key takeaway here is using these tools, you can automate your data lake management as your data grows to any scale. The power of the data lake on AWS is that data assets get ingested and stored in one massively scalable, low cost, performant platform, and that data discovery, transformation, and SQL querying can all be done in place using innovative AWS services like AWS Glue, Amazon Athena, and Amazon Redshift Spectrum. In addition, there are a wide variety of other AWS services that can be directly integrated with Amazon S3 to create any number of sophisticated analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligent data processing pipelines. AWS also has integration with a number of APM partners like Cloudera, Databricks, Kubel, and Informatica to run analytics on your data. The key takeaway here is AWS allows you to quickly solve a wide range of analytics business challenges on a single platform against common data assets without having to worry about provisioning hardware and installing and configuring complex software packages before loading data and performing analytics. Finally, when you are beginning to create your data lake, you should also consider AWS Lake Formation, a service that makes it easy to set up a secure data lake in days. Lake Formation enables you to build data lakes quickly. With Lake Formation, you can move, store, catalog, and clean your data faster. You simply point Lake Formation at your data sources, and Lake Formation crawls those sources and moves the data into your new Amazon S3 data lake. Lake Formation also changes data into open formats like Apache Parquet and Orc for faster analytics. Lake Formation allows you to enforce security policies across multiple services. In addition, you can use lake formation to centrally define security, governance, and auditing policies in one place, and then enforce those policies for users across multiple services that access data stored in your data lake. This reduces the effort in configuring policies across services and provides consistent enforcement and compliance. Lake formation also provides self-service access to data. 
Lake Formations helps you build a data catalog that describes the different data sets that are available, along with which groups of users have access to each. This makes your users more productive by helping them find the right data set to analyze. By providing a central catalog of your data, Lake Formation makes it easier for your analysts and data scientists to find and access the data they need. Now, let's put it all together with what we discussed today. First, you should optimize costs for all stages of your data lake. Second, you have a wide range of options to ingest data, and you should use different ingest tools for different sources of data. Third, plan for rapid growth and automate management at any scale. Finally, consider AWS Lake Formation to make it easy to build a secure data lake on Amazon S3. This concludes our session on breakdown data silos. I hope you learned something today and thank you for your time.